Hi, I'm Angela, and my author is Charles Bukowski. Uh, he was born in Germany in 1920 and then moved to the United States, where he lived predominantly uh, in L.A. and did most of his writing there. Um, very prolific writer. Uh, he did thousands and thousands of poems, um, wrote many, many hundreds of short stories, um, prose. He was a columnist, as well as he's published six novels. Um, he was never fully accepted into the mainstream literary circles, um, but has developed an enormous underground following which has elevated him to um, cult-like status. In 1986, Time Magazine referred to him as a quote-unquote Lorette of American lowlife. Uh, this fits to a degree, as he was known for his raw, dirty, um, very debaucherous uh, look at the everyday lives of the overlooked Americans. Uh, he rebelled against contrived behavior and politically correct idealisms of the American dream. Um, to me, he was a man who, who poeticized the sickening despair and fleeting joys of the largely ignored millions of faceless Americans. My analysis is of the, of the poem, The History of a Tough Motherfucker. <clears throat> the History of a Tough Motherfucker. He came to the door one night, wet, thin, beaten, and terrorized, a white, cross-eyed, tailless cat. I took him in and fed him, and he stayed, grew to trust me until a friend drove up the driveway and ran him over. I, to I took what was left to the vet who said, not much chance, give him these pills, his backbone is crushed, but it was crushed before and somehow mended. If he lives, he'll never walk. Look at these x-rays. He's been shot. Look here. The pellets are still there. Also, he once had a tail. Somebody cut it off. I took the cat back. It was a hot summer, one of the hottest in decades. I put him on the bathroom floor, gave him water and pills. He wouldn't eat. He wouldn't touch the water. I dipped my finger into it and wet his mouth, and I talked to him. I didn't go anywhere. I put in a lot of bathroom time, bathroom time and talked to him and gently touched him, and he looked back at me with those pale blue crossed eyes, and, and as the days went by, he made his first move. Dragging himself forward by his front legs, the rear ones wouldn't work. He made it to the litter box, crawled over and in. It was like the trumpet of possible victory blowing through the bathroom and into the city. I related to that cat. I'd had it bad. Not that bad, but bad enough. One morning he got up, stood up, fell back down, and just looked at me. You can make it, I said to him. He kept trying, getting up and falling down. Finally he walked a few steps. He was like a drunk. The rear legs just didn't want to do it, and he fell again, rested, then got up. You know the rest. Now he's better than ever. Cross-eyed, almost toothless, but the grace is back, and that look in his eye never left. And now sometimes I'm interviewed. They want to hear about life and literature, and I get drunk, and I hold up my cross-eyed shot, run over detailed cat, and I say, look, look, look at this. But they don't understand. They say something like, you say you've been influenced by Celine? No, I hold the cat up. By what happens? By things like this, by this, by this. I shake the cat and hold him up in the smoky and drunken light. He's relaxed. He knows. It's then that the interviews end. Although I am proud sometimes when I see the pictures later, and there I am, and there is the cat, and we are photographed together. He too knows it's bullshit, but that somehow it all helps. So the setting is at home. It's a simple, safe, relaxed setting. The style is um, real, common honest, raw. Uh, the tone is encouraging. It's empathetic, amazed, personally enlightened. The characters, I see the interviewer as a stock character whose narrow-minded focus, um, who has a narrow-minded focus. Um, they do not want to know Bukowski for who he is or what truly drives him. I feel like they want to fit him into kind of a trite, compartmentalized, um, intellectual author persona, what they deem an author supposed to be like. Um, the cat is a metaphor of the human spirit, the ability to endure all imaginable forms of abuse and still persist through personal grit and desire. But don't expect to be acknowledged for your struggle. Um, know your own pain and strength, and that's all that really matters. Bukowski personifies the cat. He gives him understanding, determination, and silent awareness. They emphasize with each other, with their similar dispositions. I love this poem for its simple um, example of how we overlook much of life. I feel like what is dirty, ugly, or grotesque is um, often ignored. 
we strive to find meaning and we look upward, we look outward uh, for esoteric explanations, for intellectual debates, but meaning is right under our feet, literally everywhere we look and everything that we see. Um, why I love Bukowski. He taught me that it's okay and it's important to talk about the nasty, lusty, sickening, fearful, abusive aspects of life. Um, as a woman, I felt like my poetry had to be sweet, um, esoteric, and soft. Um, but my life wasn't soft. My life was hard, and it was scary. And I was angry, and I was turned on, and I wanted to experience everything. Um, Bukowski showed me how to accept uh, both the vulgar and the beautiful inside of myself. And um, for that, he changed my life and he changed my writing. So I highly recommend you check out Charles Bukowski if you haven't already. And um, thank you very much. Bye.